It's been a tough weekend, Dave. Eh? It's tough at the top, boys. What a day! Glad you drink. Yeah, yeah, cheers to everyone. Hey, cheers, cheers. You know. Let's hope that uh, let's hope that this is uh, not not preempting too much, but today feels a definitive day in the title race. And we've not had a Sunday session ages. We've not had a Sunday session we well. And you know what? It just felt today like a few things that we don't like to get all Nostradamus with ourselves on the bus, but I think the general the general vibe was they'll slip up. The pressure's on them, and they did today, big time. There's Adam Crockett, see? You did call it on here. They looked ready to drop points. See? We were on the ball for the get-go. Um, but yeah, well, Mon the Ross County. Mon the Ross County, and uh, do you know what? We maybe need favours. I don't know where this ends, but we're going to discuss it all tonight uh, with the rest of the folk. Obviously, I don't usually smoke a cigarette on the channel, but it was just a wee bit of banter. A wee bit of banter. Um, <laughs> Johnny, Connor, you both joined me. How are we both doing? All right. I'm doing absolutely great. Um, it's been a good weekend, and it just got a whole lot better about what half past two this afternoon. I didn't watch the game. I had it on in the background, and I was listening. To it, obviously, I'm preparing to get a new patio lead over the next week, so I was tidying up. And uh, <laughs> when I seen when they scored, I thought, well, I'm well spice that off, but uh, I kept yep. it on. I couldn't believe it when seeing the equaliser, I went up the stairs, sorted them out, come back down, quick look at the phone, and I thought I was seeing things when I seen two one. I thought, fucking hell, get in there, you dancer. So, uh, Connor, yeah, good. Connor, I'll come to you. You're known for your rants. You are the panic merchant of the bus group chat. <laughs> How are you feeling today, mate? Love that strip. Oh, that's, that's a nice one, isn't it? Picked up for a bargain at a charity shop. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But uh, no, um, I've been going on for weeks and weeks about how atrocious Rangers are. I've been going on about how they've been blundering through things. They're bluffing. They're bringing themselves up to be better than what they are. And they're just wet and lost today after bigging themselves up for weeks about getting arguments with Dundee, having moral victories against Celtic at Ibrox, despite the fact that we played them off the park. And they cheated for that full 90 minutes. And they cheated today as well. And again, they lost. How do you think I'm feeling? I'm buzzing it by we head, man. I'm absolutely brilliant. That's what we want to hear on the bus. Yes, we'll do all that good stuff and we'll get stuck right in. It is a wee Sunday session. We, we one off show. You know, we don't do them that often, but I know it's going to be a busy day. And uh, there's a lot of people hurting out there. Hey, my heart goes out to you. Um, but yes, all that good stuff means give us a wee like, give us a share. Obviously, it's an impromptu show, so the more shares that we get, the more folk can jump on the bus at the same time. If you want to become a member, what is it, $1.99 a month? Content's all free. It's fine anyway. But there is loads of members. Regulars like Gary Brown, like Sam Fran Celtic, Patrick McLaughlin, Scott Howe. Loads, loads more, loads more. Look at him, old Charles Smith. He was killing himself laughing. I think he was killing himself laughing at the, <laughs> the cigarettes being smoked at the start. Daryl's in as well. A lot of people wanted a wee, a wee Sunday session today. And there's a reason why. We have had a narrative pinned on his Johnny that Celtic's struggling. Celtic should win the, the derby. Both teams had four wins from the last five domestically. Both. Who went in there with all the momentum via the media? It wasn't Celtic. It was Rangers. Who celebrated scraping a three-all draw? It wasn't Celtic. It was Rangers. They now play an away game that maybe they could have had one midweek. They can get in all the logistical debates about that, all you want. At the end of the day, they didn't fancy it the week before. Turns out both teams, I think, it, uh, it's been established now, didn't want to play it the week before, but that means they won half of that. They didn't want to play before they played us against Dundee away. Bottle gets called into question instantly. They now have it cancelled and do Statement FC. That's when you start knowing, fuck, they've had a rocky week. Once the statements come out for that lot, I always know that is when they're beginning to be at squeaky bum time, I think Alex Ferguson called it. And I think they've been there for a wee bit longer than people have realised. Then you get an interest in the stats. Ross County's first ever win against Rangers. 25th attempt was today. And Rangers have actually only won two of the last seven games, Johnny. Celtic don't get away with records like that. Celtic don't get manager adulation. Guys with their shit together 
uh, sort of posts, like Philip Clement gets with two wins for the last seven, their best result in those two from seven is not even one of the two wins. It's the draw itself against us. That's the best result in those last seven games. So as we sit here now with the title race firmly in our grip, which if you look at the titles of the bus, it was advantage Celtic. I posted the, the, the titles firmly within our hands if we want it. I look at this weekend. We've now got, after now that now it's all been, been said and done this weekend, we now go into, they've got six games left, four from six away, I'm like to believe it will turn out. We've got five games left, and I think it'll be three from five at home. Um, you could talk about momentum all you want. The media won't as much, but they sounded like they were really greeting on Radio Scotland today, which was great. Chris Boyd couldn't help because he had nowhere to run with Chris Sutton sitting beside him today in the sky. He had nowhere to hide. He was even accepting that they were gutless. Johnny, how confident are you now that this becomes Brendan's third title at Celtic and not just that, a potential... Well, it's, no one knows the real numbers, right? Let's say a, a potential bounty of four, 40 to £60 million pounds as well in the bag if we can now go on and get the job done. I am now supremely confident that that we're going to get the job done. Um, yeah, up until today's result, I suppose you could say it was all, what way is it going to go? We've got to win every game. How often have we won six games on the trot this season? Maybe twice, I think we've done it throughout the season. So I was starting to, yeah, it's all very well to say we all have to win six games. Obviously, this was before the St. Man game yesterday. And you're thinking, yeah. And again, Mike, we've said it before. It wasn't the Rangers game at Celtic Park that was going to worry me. It was other games, you know, um, such as St. Mary yesterday. If you look at the, the first half performance, which wasn't um, really what we were looking for. I didn't see the second half of the game, other things on, and I was kind of listening to it. it sounded a lot better. But yeah, to answer your question, I'm supremely confident. Um, I think I think we're going to go and do the job now. A lot more confident than I was a week ago. I mean, after the game last week, I mean, yep. I, was, I was one of these ones, you know, my... I didn't come on the show last week on your PMP, obviously. I was watching uh, you and Terry. <laughs> I mean, after Terry looked like you had a good afternoon. But, um, and I'd put on it, it was unforgivable that we'd blown that two goal lead and then the 3 2 lead the way we did. Uh, and I was I was absolutely raging about it. But the next day, when you think about it, you think, well, you know, we haven't lost it and we didn't gain anything either. But we're still in a good position here now because they've got to come to us. And I'm confident we'll beat them. It's the other games. But to answer your question, I think we're going to win the league now. Not calling it as a winner yet, but I'm confident we'll do it. It's an interesting one, Connor, because see, at the end of the day, as much as it's in our hands and I want to be a bit carried away to the unit, you can enjoy weekends like this. That's what it's all about. It's kind of technically still all in their hands as well. Albeit, when I when I did give you that ratio of home to away fixtures that they've got compared to ours, based on their performance today as well, obviously strengthening that argument. And the fact that their last derby game, which a lot of people would be pointing to as a, a title decider, will be at Celtic Park, but it will be a fitter, stronger selection that Brendan has to, to, to choose from than the team that dismantled them with ease at Ibrox in the first half before getting a bit leggy and when they were under the cosh, still showing a wee bit of mental fragility that I think has been associated with this Celtic side this year, for whatever reason. But on the whole, once we get Hattati able to do 90 minutes, McGregor, 90 minutes, I start looking at Kamika Vickers, 10, well, you'll be up to about seven, eight fixtures, starts in a row, shall we say, by the time that derby comes around again. This team looks a hell of a lot different. And I, I don't see any way a team that celebrates salvaging scraping that three-all draw at home, then comes to the Lions' den and gets three points. I don't see how they do it. They've not got it in them. I, I look at them as real chokers, and I believe Celtic finally now, with like I've been trying to explain for a wee while, whether their momentum has been greater than Rangers is debatable, but where Celtic have been has never been that far away, but yet you'd be led to believe They've been on fire. The team with two wins from seven have four away games 
in their next six to win a title. They've got a cup semi-final they're probably dreading now in the midst of all this. And they've got to come to Celtic Park. It's called momentum. The momentum shift now is in, undeniable. It's where we now lie. And it's all with Celtic. Yeah, and it's just where we go from here. <clears throat> I th- obviously, there's that old cliche, take it game by game by game. But I think that's what Celtic have been doing these, these past couple of weeks, to be totally honest. Um, and it seems like it's paying dividends. I think you can tell the difference between the two sides. You can tell that they're in their own minds about games coming up, games next week, the game against Celtic Park. I think Brendan has drilled into the players. Don't think about playing them. Don't think about Scottish Cup semi. I know it's the next game, obviously, but I'm talking before this, the game against St Mirren. Um, don't think about you know the, the semi-final. Don't think about the, the other five, six games. Think about what's on tomorrow, what you can do tomorrow, the three points you need to win tomorrow, and build on that. Think about getting back up to speed, putting in good performances, Rio doing what he said he's going to do, showing why we've missed him. All these factors coming together, which can show us starting to build more momentum. And not to, you know, obviously there's momentum been kind of gifted to us. I, I don't want to say it like that because we've obviously been the better side. But their slip-ups, their cock-ups, their manager who is cracking like a big fucking egg every you know every slip up every turn <clears throat> um it's just it's coming it's coming i, I told you i told you some months ago he'll crack under the pressure uh, well, as soon as he start getting bad results and it's happening you're, you're seeing his comments you're seeing the things coming away by just speaking absolute drivel saying they want to play on fucking mars Say you know, being very, very unsportsmanlike and unprofessional, not shaking the Ross County manager's hand, talking about moral victories and shit like that, and just all this shit we're used to hearing coming at the slabber and mouse of Rangers managers, and it's it's just coming back to what we've been saying is at the end of the day, right? We can be pretty bad. We have been pretty bad this season, to be honest. There's this a Celtic team managed by Brendan Rodgers and with the finances we've got should not still be in a title race with that Rangers side. Uh, I, I don't think that should necessarily be happening because I don't think they're good enough necessarily to have us in a title race. It's down to our own, you know, unmakings. But I think it just shows that there's a, a mental fortitude that we've got. Even some of the newer boys that have come in that, that their players have they had for years, they are, you know, record-breaking captains and, and Hall of Famers and shit like that, don't have. They ain't got the fucking minerals to keep up with us, and they never have, ever since they came back as a new club and climbed up the ranks of the the league tables. And, you know, you've seen it before. Brendan's put these fuckers to the sword, you know, a good few times, and I think we can see he's going to do it again. As bad as we've been this season, right, They've not beat us once. We could go and beat them, right? The, the Celtic Park. They'll have not beat us once. I don't. If, even if they get us in the Scottish Cup final, if they get to the Scottish Cup final, that is, they won't beat us there either. I swear to God, we could go our entire season without them beating us. Angie never even managed that, and you know we all wax lyrical about how Angie's sees how good Angie's seasons were. He never managed to do that. So, I mean, the future's looking bright. I'm not saying that. It's, it's all done and dusty. There's, I, I, there's still a couple of sticky wickets in there for Celtic, especially playing Kilmarnock, even if it is at home. Hearts as well, who've obviously um, already beat us. But you look at the, the comparison between the both sides and confidence, ability, managers, everything. It all just kind of seems to be going on in our favour. And, you know, we're sitting here like that clip of Ronaldinho just sitting up with our hands licking our lips, thinking about the the potentially what's to come and I think I think we should enjoy it today. Obviously we can look ahead to, you know, yesterday sorry, no yeah, yesterday, um was a wee bit of a Jekyll and Hyde performance. First half very, very poor. Second half came out and put, you know, slaughtered St. Mirren. Obviously we've still got that in us to potentially slip up somewhere against a better calibre team. Although saying that, St. Mirren are a top six side. They've been doing very, very well. Their manager clearly knows what he's doing. They've been doing very well the past couple of seasons. Ross County are battling relegation. And they fucking made them look ordinary today. At most. Put it this way. The only goals Rangers scored today was an own goal for Ross County and a penalty. I've seen the three Ross County goals. Excellent bits of play. Brilliant. Cut them open. Just 
made them look fucking ridiculous. Six what goals conceded in the last two games as well. I mean, it, it is weird when you look at all this. And I, I've been trying to signpost this fact as well, Johnny. You'll probably be aware. Over the last few weeks, I was trying to try just give folk a wee bit of insight as to Brendan's second spell compared to these first. Because a few things have never added up to me. It's not been a, a you know, a Brendan arse licker or whatever you want to call it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've never been... I, he annoys me at times this season. Right? Let's be real. And by the way, thanks all of those who are putting in super stickers. Scott, how the latest. Thanks to everyone who's done that. Really appreciate it. Uh, Pat Scanlon, James McFarlane, Scott Howe, really appreciate it. Um, but in terms of Rogers, I think I've been maybe on the side of more defensive of his performance so far as manager Johnny the most, right? But I try to base most things on facts. Facts that might not always, though, go with what your eyes are watching. And to balance it out, at times I think we've been torrid this season. And a lot of Jekyll and Hyde performances that, that, that Connor alludes to, I think, have, have occurred this year as well. Notwithstanding that, with that win yesterday, we're now four points off, four points short of the, the tally. Rogers won the title with in his second season, his second treble in a row season. Now, if you ask anyone, if they don't know about the points tallies, they look back at those first two years of being dominance, Celtic running away with it, and now, of course, the... The narrative is there was no competition then. Basically meaning there's competition now, Johnny. Okay? So there's competition now. All Celtic need to do in the next five games, I don't mean to win the title, but to match what Rodgers did in his second season with that all-conquering Celtic side against absolute dross, but it was so one-sided, it was unreal, and it was all easy-peasy. He only needs to win four points from his next five games to match that point tally we can all sit and agree he's going to get way more than four points from the next five games, we all know that and we need that if we want to win the league so we have to be accepting of a few facts here we can't have it both ways if this league is stronger or Rangers in particular, I think most people mean by that are far stronger but Rodgers has won more points this year and could potentially finish the season, which I think he will, unbeaten against them in the league, then where does the credit start to come in? Because all the other side shows this year, we can all accept his part in them, i.e. not being forceful enough last summer in the window, clearly not forceful enough in the January window, but also a board that are playing games with something that isn't fun, start like acting like a real business. We've all accepted that. There's been... Key elements of the support, i.e. your Green Brigade, banned from the ground for spells this year. This is the backdrop we're talking about. So see, when I look at it, I go, Brendan's about to eclipse what he did in his second treble year against Nabdi. Yet this year against proper competition, or at least proper title rival, he's going to eclipse that point total. And then you add all the other factors in. Why is it always that everything's doom and gloom with us and everything's all sunshine, rainbows, unicorns and all that with them when really the reality is we've done it the way we'd like to think. There's been hurdles in the road and that's expected in a title campaign. You're not expected to win every single game. It never happened that way in even Rogers' second season at Celtic despite us winning a treble. So why have the expectations domestically went so unrealistic? And when will we start giving credit to how this team has performed and how our manager has performed with, I think, under par signings, a bold against the support, a support not completely convinced by the manager himself, a manager without coaching staff till January, and a stronger Rangers than he's ever faced before. When do we start giving kudos? To the job that's being done right now, is it we need to wait till the titles won? I think um, the probably will be to be, um, and it is actually quite amazing to think that you know we talk about we've got a stronger competition this year, if you like, and if we have, as far as Rangers are concerned, being that stronger competition, that's more you know, it's more down to us than it is to them because when you look at it, 
The teams that are giving us a hard time haven't been Rangers. Seven points have a possible nine. So if it is a stronger competition, it's the other teams that are giving us the stronger competition rather than the team that are actually second. It's a you great know. point. That's so a so great look, point. So when you look at it that way, is it a stronger league? Probably not. Um, but we've allowed teams to give us hard times by the way we performed. If we could just put 90, 90 minutes together. I think the only time we've put 90 minutes together has maybe been twice against Aberdeen and against Dundee. Because we beat Aberdeen 6 0, didn't we? Early on in the season. And then re- Dundee when was it 7 7 1 against Dundee or something? Wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't see that game either. I was there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was away. But, um, Six goals up in the first half, you know, or something. Yeah, that's right. So, so Johnny no just choice. dropping in. He's a, he's a, he's a, you know, flying around the globe all the time, mate. I like that, mate. Big time, yeah, Johnny. I, I, Johnny, I was, it's all right, mate. Hey, hey, it's usually me who gets the ego patter on here. So it's great to hear you talking about jet setting all over the place. Missed that game. It's just another side of the world, mate. On that game, I was actually, um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember where I was going. Actually, I think it was Los Angeles. But anyway, um, they I had a commander supporter on the plane. Who was keeping me up to date with the uh, with the scores and the, the Rangers Kilmarnock game and the the Celtic Dundee game? And I thought he was winding me up when he told me that we were something like four 0 up in first inside twenty minutes. Uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. Um, so if it is a stronger challenge this year, it's not actually coming from Rangers per se. It's just the fact that Rangers, have, strange enough, dealt with some of the teams better than than we have. Um, uh, as far as results goes, not so sure about performances. But when is Brendan going to get the, the, the praise and the credit? I don't know yet, to be honest. I mean, I think everybody on here knows I wanted Brendan back in as soon as uh, Postacoglu took the took the limousine down to, down to Spurs. Totally. Uh, and I've been bitterly, bitterly disappointed. And at some point, I was thinking, we've got this wrong. He's going he's gonna to have to go. And whether he makes the season, the end of the season is debatable. I'm glad we seem to have got through it. I want to, I, and I, I want him to stay. And I think the way he's talking, he's going to be staying for next season. He's already talking about putting plans into place for next season with his recruitment team. I think he might be getting a bit more hands on, and hopefully, he's going to bare his teeth a bit and say, "Look, we got if we get it done." He said, "We got it done last season, but that was despite you, not because of you." Yes. I need to get, I need to get this in place because they are going to. If they win it, you know, I want to win it so we can get the money in that the board probably won't spend. I don't want them to win it because they will spend it. And then we will have a stronger team to play against next season. So we've got to be got to make sure they just don't get it. But I don't know when Brendan will get the credit. Or maybe it might be on... He maybe be on, just has to have the trophy, trophy in his hands, eh? He maybe just needs it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, think that's, I think that's probably accurate. Um, we get to the stage corner of... There's a celebrity fan. Wait, he's actually flattery. Big Flash herself. Flash Bandicoot on the old Twitter. Nice chops. Nice choice of football tops tonight, guys. Thanks, Flash. That's fine. It's the only one I've got left. Uh, but aye, Connor, see when it comes down to it, right? You look at you look at the way Rogers has been described this season by Celtic supporters as well as the rest of the media. And the guy, even on this channel. We've spoke about, I don't see him being here next season. He doesn't strike you as a guy who, he didn't feel engaged to me. I think it's took moments to like almost get under his skin for him to kind of almost get the fans on side as well. I think it's took him to go, you know, I think when the, I think the, the penny really dropped that this isn't all true, the way Roger's been described here, is when the good girl thing, you tried to make a big meal of it. And I've got your BBC Sports and you listen to that back. That'll be used, by the way, in years to come. They'll look at that and go, look how naughty that channel was there. Um, because what they did then was basically go, oh, 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 oh. When he used to, all he said was, good girl, listen to everything he's done this season. Good man. Good man, a journalist. And I think then that's when people start going, oh, wait, the new. That's the thing you're going out your way to pick and pick on someone and try and create drama out of nothing. It tells you the agendas against them. They're trying to upset the, the, the Celtic juggernaut. And that's the reality, by the way, whether people like this or not. 
the, the team Celtic are up against are never in these waters that they're in right now of title races. They've won one, and it was a COVID season. So to dismantle the the biggest team in the country, they've went personal with Rodgers there. Misogyny and things like that in a woke world is fucking out of order. And I think then was a turning point where a lot of fans will be on the fence with him. And maybe still just think he's a dick, right, because he left for Leicester. And I get that. That's okay. But I think a lot of them went, but that's targeting now Celtic and the Celtic manager as opposed to looking at it just as, oh, I don't like Brendan. I don't want him there. Now they're like, no, they're just going for, could be anyone in situ there. They're making up excuses. And I think since then, there's been a wee shift for the attitudes towards our manager. I think there's been a shift in attitude from Brendan, his first ever suspension in Scottish football for comments to the media. Factual comments. I think these things have all shown that this guy is, is on site. And the reason I'm making these points are, I think he's became more into it as the seasons went on. I think he was a bit complacent when he came in. And I think fans went as engaged as maybe he thought they would be in him. That's probably his ego's talking that, 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 that's led to that. But I think we're in a situation now where if we were to win this league, I think you look at a guy that could now stick around if he can keep building on that. That could be a legacy manager at Celtic. Not two, three years and then out the door. A legacy manager. He's had both sides of the fence down corner. I was talking to Terry about this yesterday. He's seen what it's like to be a mid-table side punching above the weight and then when a mid-table side falls below the weight and how much you get hated for that despite all the amazing work he'd done the years before that, which way outweighs one dodgy season. And then, of course, he'd been a title race down there as well with Liverpool and ousted out of that job not too long after. He's done all that now. He's had two bites of that. He's at the club he loves. And maybe if he can get over this tricky first season phase... We might be looking at a manager that's here for the long haul. Yeah, I think um, he's had his back against the wall multiple times this season. That's kind of when you've seen a bit of fight in him, to be honest. I think when at the start of the season, obviously, by the way, everybody forgets this. Rangers lost the, the first league game of the season. Everybody forgets that. We went out, beat, I can't even remember it, as we were playing, to be honest. We went out, beat who we were playing, with three points clear already <clears> at you know the first week. I think he's thought, oh, this might just be easy again. This might just, you know, he's maybe been a wee bit complacent. And then obviously as things have gone on, results have came in, they've got a new manager and fast forward to now, he's in like, hmm, I've got a bit of a challenge here. I'll need to, you know, try and, you know, G up my players, try and do something, try and uh, get what I can out of this because obviously we were out the, the League Cup by this point and things weren't looking good at a certain point. And then... The media are trying to do a fucking hatchet job on him, try to put out he's like he's some sort of sexist. Which, by the way, I know you're saying it's a woke world. It's a bit more than that. This is the day and age where you can get cancelled for things you said in your youth as a bloody teenager online. Stupid things that you had you no context of, right? Old tweets getting dragged up and stuff like that. You can get, you know, dra- raked through the coals for just making flippant comments now and your career can be over, you can, you know, lose, you know, sponsorships, livelihoods, all sorts of things like that. And the media knew exactly what the fuck they were doing that. They were stoking the flames against Rogers that we had as a support because I know we obviously backed them in that and you know in this scenario, but we weren't happy necessarily with how things were going at the time. Um Rangers fans were obviously thinking they were gonna win the league at a canter and Clement was, you know, a fucking Pep Guardiola regen and, you know, he was coming in to just destroy us and stuff like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait. You can't say Pep Guardiola. Right? I, tell me you've seen the clip for yesterday, guys. Tell me you've seen it. What? So they're doing sports, sports soccer or whatever, or sports Saturday on Sky. Or was it last week? Whatever it's been. And it's Paul Merson going, like, he called him Yap Stam. <laughs> he thought he was Yap but he wasn't even joking. He was like, yeah, Yapstan looks disappointed there. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows who Philip Clement is. Nobody cares, mm-hmm. mate. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, and there's that old saying, you know, there's been a couple of points where he's almost been kind of wounded this season, but 
you know when I when the Dynamo's most dangerous when you put their back against the wall and they've got to fight their way out. And I think that's what Brendan's kind of been doing. He's been kind of fighting tooth and nail with a plethora of injuries. We now know that Barry dies in Midas out for the rest of the season. An integral part of the squad, he's out for the rest of the season. He's not going to make another appearance for Celtic. You've had Palma out, Carter Vickers out, Rio Hitati out. Um, I think Kyogo was out maybe for a wee bit as well, maybe like one week or two weeks. Callum McGregor's going to injure their captain. Um, we've had to chop and change the centre-back partnership. Fucking hundreds of times this season. Liam Scales, who had a good half, uh, first half of the season, but was not fancied at all coming in. I got shoehorned in there, and granted he's done all right, but I still think he's not Celtic quality. Has been one of our starting centre backs, right ahead of players that we've paid four million pound for uh, a piece. You know, it's not been we've not exactly been going, you know, along in the, uh, you know the lazy river and are we uh, rubber ring here? It's been you know it's been it's been riptide rapids um, this season, to be honest. Um, and I think that when all when the dust is settled, when all said and done. And the, the league trophy is sitting in Celtic's trophy cabinet. We can look back on this and say Rogers deserved criticism multiple multiple times this season for the results and for the way he went about doing things. However, he's had you know things against him go this season from injuries, the media not being back properly. He's not been back properly at all. You think about it. We were getting players like Jota, I can't remember because I know they were already there. We were getting, you know, Yakimakis, Aaron Moy, uh, multiple uh, players, of the, players of the year from from uh, Japan, stuff like that. We have we've had nothing like that this season. January, where it was tight, tight as fuck. What did, what did we get? Nicholas Kuhn, who at the start looked like an absolute bohemer, and Adamida, who I think proved those are wrong, but looked like a very much a panic, you know, a panic sign at the time. And that was it. That's we didn't get him. We didn't get another centre back, didn't get another goalie, didn't get a left back, didn't get nothing like that. He's not been back properly. So to be where he is now, even though we've dropped those points, you know, earlier on the season, still I think shows how good a manager he is. He knows what he's doing. He's played this game multiple times before. He can, you know, he can outclass fucking um, Clement at any game he wants, man. He's playing chess, he play checkers. Fucking Clement's playing connect for the fucking diddy. So, you know, it's at the end of the day, I think we need to take confidence in the fact that we have a man in situ who knows what he's doing. And that for the last five weeks of the game, the last, you know, five weeks of this, just back him, back the team, and then, you know. Come at me after after the celebrations or the commiserations, depending on what happens. Then we can just you know go all in if we do, if you know all guns blazing if we need to. But for now, until then, I think it is important that we all as a collective come together, you know, and and, and back these back him to the help. It's interesting as well that 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 one, Johnny. That really the amount of drop points we've done this season. You you were smart, like you said earlier. They actually came against Rangers, so that that could take away these crazy levels of think they're above now than what they were. Albeit, I do think they are a stronger outfit than they were before. I do believe that. I think Celtic's a weaker team than Rodgers' first spell as well, individually. When I go through Celtic's lineup now, I don't look at a right-back as good as Lustig, for example. I don't look at a left-back as good as Kieran Tierney. Do you know what I mean? See, these are just two examples right off the bat. Wait alone when you start talking Moussa Dembele's and things like that, you're going, wait a now. And I think the Rangers team then was weaker. So he's doing it with a weaker Celtic against stronger Rangers. He's getting the points against them and he's dropping what will now, when all is said and done, come the end of the season, when Celtic's point tally is finally totaled, will be a standard amount of points to be dropped. The panic, oh, definitely, definitely the panic is higher than it should be sometimes. Yeah, I mean, when you actually came out with that on the... I think it was on the... Um, one day last week when you said it on one of the shows you were on in the Monday Club or whatever it was, about how we were about probably going to beat the 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 points total that was set when he won the, the his second um, treble. Um, I was I wasn't quite surprised when you because when you think of the points we've dropped, the performances we put in, and there is no two ways about it. If Rangers are a stronger team than they were a couple of years ago, or when Brendan was last here, when we are definitely a weaker team than the one that Brendan had before. 
and we're a weaker team than the one we watched last season. I think I think that's been half the problem for us this, this year is because for the vast majority of the last two seasons, we were flying high. All right, we had a slow start, then we took off and we just blazed through everything domestically. Um, and then we've done the same again in the second season until we clinched the title. And then the wheels fell off with the 4-2 defeat to Hibs and we played pretty crap stuff. Even the you know, the cup final last year we, against them, Vanessa Cali, one of the worst cup finals I've sat and watched. If it hadn't been a Celtic, if it hadn't been Celtic playing in it, the telly would have got switched off and I'd have gone and watched paint drive. No one wants to hear that though. That. No one wants Definitely. to hear that. No one wants to hear that, Johnny, because they don't believe it. They've deluded themselves that the fall from Celtic this year is miles and miles away from Postacoglu Celtic. They have forgotten. It's a forgotten few months. Mm. The last three months of last season, isn't it? It's like, it's like that is not how it was. I, I, Terry's the best advocate I've got of that because the amount of times we came on this channel and did PMP and went, Ugh, did what he said in the tin, got the game done, wasn't great. That is how the last three, four months of Posta Colgo's reign was. People could know that this was electric football for two years and there's been a massive drop-off. The drop-off had begun and the quality that was brought in in the summer didn't stimulate that team whatsoever because there was no one that came in as a first-team regular. Not one first-team, first-choice player was signed in the summer. So the team wasn't stimulated enough to get you out of that mire. Then a different manager comes in, slightly different ideas, not maybe as aggressive as what Apostle Koglu is in terms of his tactics, but they'd fallen off already, this group, in terms of their dynamis dynamism, their intensity, this this rock and roll football, Ange Ball as it was being called. Ange Ball finished, I think, as far as I'm concerned, at Celtic in February last season. Glimpses here and there. Celtic have been in pretty much glimpses this year of total Rogers football, if you want like Rogers total football sort of ideology. It's been moments as well. Never that consistency, but really the telltale signs, Johnny. I'll come back straight back to you because I interrupted. But I think they've been there since last season, as you alluded to. Oh, de definitely. Um, and I think the first time it really hammered home with me when Hibs gave us a doing 4 2, I think we'd already clinched, we had clinched the title that time anyway. But I mean, it just kept going downhill. And, you know, it doesn't make you wonder if the season had gone on a couple of weeks and our form kept dipping that way, would we have beaten Vaness Cali in that final? Well, you know, it was one of the ones where it was definitely a case of you were glad to get to the end of the road and park the bus up and go away for the, your holidays and that like, weren't you? Um, but yeah, going back to it, yeah, we are, we are not the team that we were for 18 months under Posta Coglu, and we're nowhere near the team that we were in certainly Brendan's first season uh, when he came when he first came up. But we've got to try and do something to get it back to that if we get this season finished now, the way I think it will go now, um and, and get all in, like they said they were gonna be, which they haven't done. You know, um and, and get all in for next season and, and don't have any pissing about, get the job done, get out. Get players brought in. We lost Jota, and that was a massive loss. Carter Vickers being injured the way he was, and struggling to get back. He's the one, I've said it before. He's the one man in that team that when he's not playing, I have the fear. Um, you know, my ear not being fit for the rest of the season. If that's official now, Conrad, I don't know whether it is or not. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a handy guy to have about because of his work rate, not necessarily because of his football ability. Uh, McGregor, and he, so he's not going to be playing that game. Um, McGregor, if he's fit, great. If he's not, well, I think we can cope. But if they woke up on that the day of whenever we play that game, and I think it'll be the second game of the. Yep, the I think that seems fair. Yep. Um, if we wake up in the morning, they say Carter Vickers is not playing. Then I'm starting to worry. I, get I, I know, I get that. You get the feeling that Vickers is not in that team. Um, yep. I think he's far more influential. He's one of the most influential centre backs we've had at the club in the last 10 years. That's how strong well, I think about, about, well, about Well, I think CCP's been a massive, a massive catalyst of Celtic just looking a wee bit more assured this, this season. 
By the way, what teams, what Celtic teams can you look back on, Connor, that wouldn't miss a Cameron Carter Vickers at the back? I think Cameron Carter Vickers gets in Tony's back three ahead of Valharan. I think you'd, have, you'd still have Bobo, Bobo, you'd have Mialbe, and you would have, I think you would have CCV alongside them, no problem. He would mm-hmm. slot in and be more than more than equipped to play in, uh, in the Seville final, for example, no problem. I think um, there has been signs of players coming back and not just probably being acutely aware that I've not really quite had the, the, the team that, that we wanted to have before quite there yet. And and now we're beginning to see the team there. And I love this for Patrick McLaughlin because I think Rodgers didn't escape criticism this year, by the way. Like, and, I've, and I've been quite open about that. Albeit, I still think my head rules my heart on I think he's the best option for us to have as a manager. I think it's easy to pick up on any mistake he makes because you've got a dislike for what he did before. I'd even dislike what he did before, to be honest with you, because I get it. I think it's a career move and it's with a board that didn't like him being the most the top boy at Celtic when they want to be top boy. See, we also forget any other football club. See, this is you listen to a talk sport, for example, Connor, right? And they're talking about a club. Not a club like Celtic, which is levels, mate, in terms of intense coverage, intense pressure, all that. I think any other club that gets a new manager that comes in, we hear this phrase a lot that Patrick McLaughlin says, it's called a transitional season because of the manager change. This has been a transitional season. Folk just don't want to hear that because it's Celtic. So it's the... See if he wins this title this year in a transitional season. That's props as well. Because whether we like it or not, transitional seasons have to happen when there's manager changes. Celtic have a a fair, but to outsiders looking in, unrealistic gauge of what is uh, uh, an expectancy level. It's unrealistic at times. It's an unrealistic expectancy to... Right, we're going to change manager, not give many new coaches, keep a lot of the same players, bring in seven that he's never even heard of, and then get him to all, just put it all together in a pot and win the league. And it is quite unrealistic. Celtics went through a transition this year, and with this guy at the helm, put it this way, if it wasn't Rodgers at the helm, with the backdrop of everything else, would we still be favourites for the title now? I don't know. No, I mean it's a good question. It's, it's, you know what I mean. It's like, it's like trying to build a fucking a, a supercar, right? A supercar who has been built, we built previous models of it time and time and time again. We've got a new engineer in, right? Who's done some good things before. We get the new engineer in. We're saying, right, we're taking away some of the previous team who were fucking excellent at building it. Some of your engineers who you're used, to, um, you can, you, you know, you've asked for your own engineers and that to build it. We're not going to give you any. Just stick with the guys we've got. Um, do we have some of the correct parts that will necessarily work? Aye, they might work. So here, on you go. Go ahead and build it. That's essentially what's happened. It's try to g- give them all these fucking ingredients to mix together in a big pot to fling it to the wall and see if it sticks. It's as you know, it, it, this season, depending on what happened, it could still, you know, we could still lose it. Let's not, you know, get too ahead of ourselves. We could still lose it. But if we do win it, right, the board. Fucking gambled massively, and that's why, right? See, despite the fact that a Rangers are fucking shite, b Celtic are in the driving seat for the league, c Rogers is still schooling them to this day, right? And we, you know, we could go on and win and celebrate and have a fucking brilliant summer celebrating, sticking it to the cunts across and govern, right? Don't take your eyes off the fucking board. We keep saying it. We keep saying it week in and week out because they're the ones who have not tooled the man up properly for the job. If he had been tooled up properly, getting the players in that he wanted, getting his own backroom team possibly as well, and properly reinvesting the fucking gargantuan sums we got from the Champions League and from transfers like Jota, we would be well clear. This is the same man who took a fucking... James Forrest and a Scott Brown, who looked like they were going to shuffle off the mortal coil of football. Couldn't agree more. Done, looked like they were done. Transformed them into these amazing players. And, by the guys... way, and, and he created the, the, the Kieran Tierney we now know. He created uh-huh. the Cal McGregor we now know. Uh-huh. Yes, Ronnie Dyler gave him the induction, but let's have it right. 
they uh, became who they became in life. Cal McGregor uh, will go down as one of Scotland's most capped players, one of Celtic's most des- decorated players and captains of all time. Kieran Tierney, a twenty-five million pound fullback who will mm-hmm. have a career trophy laden, over fifty caps for Scotland as well. I yeah. think we'll just took them to that to to that that level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. And look, I know I, I could be going a bit fucking far here, but see, at the end of the, end of the day, right? If he wins this league in that, and considering what he's done and what's led up to here, Callum McGregor being the Celtic captain who he took under his wing when he first came to Celtic, you know, he's essentially built a bit of a, a bit of a dynasty at Celtic. To go from that to this, and I know there was the rocky road in between, he fucked off to Leicester, blah, blah, whatever, that's all in the past, right? He's built a bit of a football dynasty at Celtic, and we need to kind of appreciate it. I understand he's a bit of a blabbermouth, and he sounds like he just bullshit sort of time. He comes up with these mad comments and phrases and stuff like that. And, you know, before a ball was even kicked, he was shouting out the the folk um, being there when he was getting un- uh, unveiled as a major all season, May and all that. Um, if you if you know if you're still doubting me and stuff like that, but as a guy who knows what he's doing, I can't, I've said this point before. You don't win an FA Cup with Leicester if you're a shit team, if you're a shit manager. You don't get Leicester to a European semi final if you're a shit manager. You don't almost win the league with Liverpool, right? Who Liverpool are one of the you know the biggest teams and best teams in that league. Just because of that, it's not necessarily fucking easy. Look at what's happening with Liverpool now under Klopp, who's an incredible manager. They're bottling the league right now. If you've not seen the results today, they lost again today to Crystal Palace. They're bottling the league. Klopp's only won it once, right? And the whole time he's been there, he's only won it once. He's won them cups and that. Rogers nearly won it with Liverpool. You know? True. Yep. So, there's all these things that, that people... He's just like I think it's per- I think it's more personal than factual, and Man. I think Rogers has I think Rogers has made mistakes as well. By the way, and I'll give you the biggest ones that I think he's made. The, the biggest full bar was seeing you come back, don't come back like Rogers light. And I know that was the co- the, the the term we were coining Johnny on the channel at the beginning of the season. Well, I was. Um, it fucks me off that he didn't come back with the same bite, and it's actually. Reminds you of what Lennon did when he got, got the second bite of the apple. But for me, Lennon came back with a career that had really went... I mean, That's... from where he was at Celtic, he'd never exactly reached those heights again. Brilliant job at Hibs. Folk forget that. But he did do a brilliant job at Hibs. Bolton should never have took the job. That makes me question him. Because he should have known that. You do your homework before you take a job. You don't get a free pass. He knew he'd want to watch getting Celtic second time round. So I could see why Lenny became a yes man. Rogers didn't need to take the job. He was on his year high years. Why on earth did he come back and accept, I feel very similar terms to what Lennon did and what Ange refused. As much as I say Ange refused, Celtic were that desperate, they just let him do what he wanted because they'd waited that long on Eddie Howe. I think Ange wouldn't have had the same uh, clout, shall we say, if he'd been appointed at the beginning of that summer, as opposed to when they realised Eddie Howe wasn't joining and they were in panic station mode. When I look at Rogers coming back, I just thought, grab it by the balls again. Why would you accept a job without coaching staff around you? Why would you accept nine players signed that maybe you had a hand in one of in the summer? Why are you accepting that? And that's came back and bit him on the arse, big time. But I just wonder if this summer, they allow the same mistakes to be made. I would love to have someone, if it is Rogers, why not have him trying to, trying to do something of, there'll be a, a mini version, but like imagine Rogers going, do you know what, I now feel committed because I've had other experiences, other tastes. I you know, The grass won't always be green on the other side, but because he's tried it, and he's got his second bite of the apple, why not now, Celtic have a, a really serious sense of stability with a manager who has got the chops, right? He's got it. Folk talking about being a dinosaur in the chat and all this, or the game's passed him by. I mean, come on, why would he suddenly just not be keeping up with the Joneses? Why? What, he just doesn't know anything about football now. He doesn't keep up to date with it. Stop it. Like, it's silly. And it's just, see, lazy terms like that dilute from football knowledge where 
You look at examples of guys like Klopp who evolve over 10 years, guys like Alex Ferguson who evolve over 27 years at Man United, haven't already done stuff at Aberdeen. I think over the next 10 years, you'd watch an adaptable Rodgers. And he's maybe found this season his biggest adapting season in his career so far. But if he finishes with the league trophy in that, then more credit to him. A, a stable Celtic that has the real foundations, Johnny, of a manager there for legacy now for the next decade, that could take us to, that could take it to the next level as well. And then there's real foundations built, not just for the here and now, but for the future too. I think you're right. And um, what had me so excited about Brendan when he came back, as I said, I, I wanted him back. He was, my, he was my first, second and third choice, if I'm being honest, is because I thought there's no way he's going to come back and let things drop or let things dip. He's going to come in there and he's going to say, I want this, I want that, and I want that, and I'm getting it. And that just didn't happen, did it? You know, it was that's been the, the biggest disappointment for me this season is the way that Brendan came back as Brendan Light, as you coined the phrase way back at the sort of early on in the season. And I really don't think he's going to allow that to happen again, a second season on the trot. And I think if it looks heading that way, then he will go. I don't think, because I don't think he has to stay. It's like you said, he didn't have to come back. Um, Lennon, as you said, you want to watch. He came back and we were all happy for him to come back. But I didn't know any Celtic supporters that wanted Lennon to get the job on a full-time basis. Um, even out visiting my brother in Australia at the time when we were looking for a new manager and a couple of his mates and, on the golf course of Celtic supporters, they didn't want Lennon back either. But we got Lennon back and that was turned out to be the wrong the wrong. He won a go. treble though. He won, two, he won the he, two trophies that were available. Then he won a treble, which yeah. we folk forget as well. Yeah. And, I, and things, by the way... That COVID good. season's sorry to interrupt you, but that COVID season's becoming more of an anomaly than ever. See, the more you start looking at that COVID season, the more you start realizing how much of a freak show that was. Oh, definitely. But the but yeah, but when when Lenin came did come back, you know, um, it was like he knew he'd he'd come home, sort of thing, and he was uh, and I just want to stay here. Like I said, he should never have took the Bolton job. It was well known down here that Bolton were in a shit show and uh, were uh, in some serious financial troubles as it turned out to be um, and he should never have gone there he did do well at Hibs he got, he got them he brought them back up to the Premiership didn't he didn't he he got them promoted yeah and he was doing well and I, I don't know what went on behind the scenes there who's that we got promoted sorry to say that again Lennon when he was at Hibs they were down in the yeah 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 they, he, he got it. didn't he yeah. He got out promoted, then he got the record points tally Hibs have ever had in their history in the, the top flight. Yeah. Folk don't like these facts either. He was doing a good job. He was, he, like you said, he was doing a good job at Hibs, but I think he fell out. Was, was, it, was it the players? He fell out with the players or something, was it? I mean, I'm obviously being down in Lincoln, I don't really keep that much of an eye on Hibs, apart from when they're playing us, but I know there was some shenanigans, shall we say, going on in the background. But when Brendan came back, and yeah, like you said earlier on the show there, he done well. He won the cup. I think you said it. Connery won the cup. Did he win the, the uh, charity shield as well, or the community shield, or whatever they call it nowadays? Yeah, he beat Pep Guardiola's man yeah. second in charity yeah. shield. Your mom comes in with the chat. I was having to back and forth. I mean, your mom just hates Rogers, right? And that's fine. You don't need to like everybody, but see if you're going to be like loads of facts and try and make them sound really, really smart and like they're based on evidence. You've got to be balanced. That's what I was trying to do in the bus. I give the negative side to Rogers. I've spoke about that, and then I'll give the positives. So, when I read like points like, um, like the, like the one your mom put in, and it's it, it's just deleting a lot of the facts. He he went to Leicester, got them relegated. That misses out two fifth place finishes, an FA Cup, a Charity Shield, and Rogers leaving before they were relegated, having been that season. The only team out of 20 who didn't pay a penny for a player until the final day of the window. So, see his net spend in no, his Sherman, final season. No, Sherman died Sherman, as well. Sherman died. And when he got his final summer before that, that, that fatal season in the end, his net spend was something like minus, i.e. profit for the, the, the club, £100 million. Yeah, because they sold that. So I start telling the truth when we yeah. talk about he went to Leicester, got them relegated. 
See you later, mate. That's just bullshit. And, and, and I can't be asked listening to like just narratives that aren't true. It's just not right. You know I what think I mean? Les, I think Leicester got themselves relegated. As, as you yeah. said there, Connor, after the chairman got killed in the helicopter uh, disaster, um, the son took it over and yeah. he was it didn't, and just never was committed in spending Changed the money. The, direction. Yeah. The, the chairman previous, to, you know, the, the, the dad, he was probably the most popular chairman in, in England. He would the Leicester supporters would get free drinks when they came into the stadium. We would do all sorts of stuff, loads of handouts. We'd pay money towards buses, supporters' buses. Um, but when he got killed, um, that all dried up and the money all dried up for the team. And Brendan, as you said, I think he sold the guy to Chelsea. There was a big protracted thing about that, wasn't it? I think the, they eventually got something like 75 to 80 million for it. And I think the player he bought was it was it was a suit his brother, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Harry, Harry Suter. Fifty Suter. million, fifty right. million of his soldier sent back for seventy. I mean, let's just in, in Celtic terms, yeah. that's what we complain about. Mm-hmm. It's literally the definition of it. It's when we go sell a player and then buy a replacement for a quarter of less than a quarter of the price. Yes, sell but John for twenty-five million and buy Yang. Mm-hmm. But we look for an ivory yeah. tower. We look for an ivory tower down at the EPL as if it's what the hardest league in the world to compete in. So there's honestly the Rogers narrative about his time at Leicester is bullshit. And folk really need to get a grip on that. And it's personal in my opinion. It's because you don't like him. So you want to slay him for that. Anyway, we're nearly at the hour mark. Let's talk about attitudes going forward. Um the way I see it is, I I I felt the biggest chunk of the armor I seen Connor was the celebrations, the jubilation at Ibrox after what I describe as scraping a three all draw. When we look at that, that was relief. That was an outpour of. That was not anything but that. And I do think we've seen a team that's on the wobble. Here's my prediction, if you want one. And by the way, I know I was going to say we get clipped up, but nobody cares, mate. Nobody actually do that many folk watch watch the bus that they're going to that are going to uh, clip us up. I wouldn't be surprised. Just as fate would have it, Connor. Right? I say prediction. Here's a thought, shall we say? Maybe a better way to put it. <coughs> Celtic finished the league season. The eight point gap reinstated. How about that? I think you're right. I think I think you're right. Was I? I could see them right dropping points to Dundee right uh, next week, either losing or getting a draw, right. So that's then six points clear if that's a draw, right. Um, and we'll then we will, we will beat them at Celtic Park. That's I I have no qualms about playing them at Celtic Park. I think we'll turn them over. We'll absolutely do them, even with guys like Maeda. Missing and McGregor not fully fit and scales out forever how long as well. Um, as the other games that you look at it and you're like, oh, they're the ones that you're more nervous. I'm more nervous about playing Kilmarnock than I'm playing against Rangers. That says a lot about Rangers, to be totally honest. You know that's and it probably shouldn't be happening. Let's be totally honest because Rogers has schooled McInnes time and time again. I think a lot is to do with like. The pitch, possibly, and the fact they've got a lot of you know big cloggers in that team who are very, very physical and you know play you know a very you know tight block and stuff. Something we've, we've struggled all season with breaking down. They might just happen to be better at it than everybody else who were used to beat them. Anyway, in terms of you know attitudes, I think our attitude, like I was saying earlier, is take it game by game, game by game by game, full focus on just the next game. Who does that stem from, mate? So I want to, I'm going to go straight back to you. That is Rogers, right? No one's given the credit for that. Look at Philip Clement doing all this with fans after a three or draw. What does that yeah. stimulate, mate? It creates bravado. panic. It creates bravado. it being an emotional bravado. process. It's an emotional process he's turned it in as opposed to a strategical one. And that is what Rogers has done. Strategical, easy for me to say. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you look at it as well, though, like... Rogers has been like clipped multiple times this season because of the things he said, and they've tried to, you know, batter him with it essentially, right? With the oh, we'll see you in May stuff, the good girl comments, the mind he made the comments saying, Oh, 
I, I've seen all five Rangers managers in my time here, essentially. You know, seeing he's came up against that many Rangers managers during his time here that he's seen them all because he's schooled them time and time again. So, obviously, that included Beal as well. And the media fucking jumped on it. They, they, they bit hard for the, for the bait. I, I swear to God, I bet Rodgers was dangling out for a bit of bait because he's, he's that clever. He's that clever, by the way, that he knows he'll get bites for that. He knows that they'll start foaming at the mouth and to just see the... The, the axe they have to grind against him and against his players, that he can use that as ammunition to forge a bit of camaraderie, you know, get the, get their backs up, you know, keep them, the, the fires within them to keep them going. And then you look at the other side, Clement with the um, moral victory pish, the fucking, oh, I, I don't think that's, a, you know, a, a penalty at all. Um, fucking coming out saying, oh, we will play on Mars if we have to. Maybe we didn't play at Den's part the week before when you could have. Today, after their, their game, oh, uh, I'm uh, I'm not making excuses, but we uh, we couldn't train properly this week. Do you know yeah, what yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, a fucking that's a fucking excuse. And you know what? I'll ju- I'll just finish off with this, right? Big Voldemort, right? Right? And you know, if you, if you, you fucking love what your Harry Potter in that, Russell. Do you remember what Harry's Patronus is? I don't like Harry Potter, man. I don't like Harry Potter. Oh, do you know? I thought you liked Harry Potter. Like, oh, no, I hate... No, I don't like him. I like Snape. I don't like Dumbledore. <laughs> I don't like Harry Potter. I think he's an egotistical weak prick. Dumbledore created that. I like Snape. He's all right. Snape's cool. Anyway, do you remember what uh, um, Harry's Patronus is? He uses to defeat uh, Voldemort. Voldemort. Stag. A stag. A stag. A stag. <laughs> 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 Billy, Johnny, the final word goes to you on this Sunday session, mate. Have it. Well, I'm just um, looking forward to lifting the title. I think we might be a step closer on uh, Wednesday night because I think Dundee are going to be fired up. Uh, as I said to you guys before we came on, uh, I think they're going to be well fired up for this game because of the statement FC's statements regarding Dundee and the professionalism and this, that, and the next thing. If I was the chairman or the owner of Dundee, I'd be going in and speak to them players saying, extra little bonus for you, boys. Show your professionalism and sort them out. And so it's think, funny. It's funny how things, things go around. What goes around comes around. Could we end up at the end of this season talking yet again about Rangers, Dundee, and sporting integrity. I'll leave that one with a lot of you. Leo has in the comments what you think about that interesting one. But listen, let us let us know as well in the comments. Do you think the title got one step closer? Do you think it's signed, sealed, delivered? Do you think we still are up against it and too inconsistent to win? Let us know. We want to hear all your views. This is what the bus is all about. Connor, Johnny, thank you for the Sunday sesh. Cheers to you all. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks for Have a good one, guys.